so students the next organism is arthropods for example limulus or king crab this limulus is aquatic in habit and it possesses book gills now what is mean by book gills these gills are present in the form of plates similar like that of book lungs but uh, book lungs are useful for aerial respiration and book gills are useful for water respiration so these are the plates which looks like book pages that's why this is known as book gills so entry of oxygen and exit of co2 that means gaseous exchange occurs along the surface of these plates known as book gills so remember the difference between book lungs and book gills book lungs are useful for animals which are having habitat terrestrial whereas uh, book gills are useful for animals which are having aquatic uh, habitat clear and the best example is limulus all these examples you have to learn carefully and remember carefully because on these examples the mcqs are there the next organism is amphibians for example tadpole larva a frog salamander newts etc these are the examples of amphibians now the frog is a very specific a uh, living organism or animal uh, which can live in water as well as on uh, land salamander also newts also but here the tadpole larva is one of the life stage in the life cycle of frog it possesses specific type of uh, respiratory organ known as external gills because most of the metamorphic changes occurs in frog inside this tadpole larva in water hence aquatic in habitat and it possesses external gills the gills which are present outside the body and they are helpful for gaseous exchange they are known as external gills the next next organism is fish and uh, you know very well fish is one of the class of phylum chordata all of them they are aquatic in habitat and they possess internal gills for example if you draw the diagram of fish they possess such paired gills minimum five pairs of gills are present in fish and these are internal gills these internal gills they are provided with lots of blood capillaries highly vascularized water enters through mouth and leaves out passing over the gills and during which the gaseous exchange occur the oxygen and co2 is exchanged present inside the water so it is useful for taking oxygen diffused in water so almost all organisms which are having habitat they take oxygen present in diffused condition in water then reptiles birds and mammals so large uh, or wide examples wide uh, range of examples from reptiles birds and mammals almost all they are terrestrial in habit and almost all they are as they are terrestrial in habit they are adapted for lung respiration their respiratory organ is lung now you are well known the lung possesses alveolus this is alveolus this alveolus is provided with single layer of squamous epithelium and then it is uh, supplied with lots of blood capillaries 
there is blood capillaries, there is a network of blood capillaries around this alveolus and that alveolus exchange gaseous or gases, oxygen and CO2. And the last example is turtle. Turtles are, when they are present under water, actually turtle is one of the reptile, but when it is present under water, it respires with cloaca. And when it is present on the land, it respires with lung. So, dual mode of respiration. Now, what is meant by cloaca? Cloaca is a common chamber present at the posterior end. And uh, that common chamber is for uh, excretion, digestive system and reproductive system. So excretion, ejection and reproduction that occurs in that chamber. That's why that is called as cloaca. So in addition, this cloaca also performs the function of respiration when turtles are present under water. So remember all these examples, their habitats, their respiratory surfaces and organs. And uh, these are summarized in our textbook in one chart. Learn that chart carefully. Remember the examples. Now there are MCQs on these examples. I will send you uh, questions along with this video, solve that questions and uh, in the next video we will uh, find out their correct answers or I will say the correct answers in the next video. Thank you.